To display a list of our contacts, the first thing that I'm thinking, we need to add a new collection view. So we'll do this at the bottom. We'll give it a comment that says all contacts view. All right, let's set that up. App.views.contacts. And within here, I think we're probably going to end up using a table because we are going to be displaying tabular data. So within here, why don't we set the tag name? I might change this, but I'm going to set it to the T body. I think that's going to be the topmost element, the root element. And next, I'm going to set up the render method. So how is this going to work? Well, it needs to have access to the collection. And we'll say this.collection for each one, we're going to add one. You should be familiar with this by now. And within here, when we call add one, that needs to accept the contact. And we'll say contact view equals a new app.views.contact. So I'm going to have to create a new smaller view specifically for the individual contact. Right now, we just have the wrapper for all of the contacts. So we'll pass in the model so that it can use that. Then ultimately, what we're going to do is render that. And what I want to do is take the rendered element and we're going to append that to the T body. So if contact view renders a TR with various TDs for the first name, last name, email address, and description, once that renders, we're going to take that new TR and append that to the T body. Finally, from our render method, I need to make sure that I return this. So now that we have a collection view, let's also set up one for a single one, single contact view. We'll create that now, app.views.contact, and this tag name will be a TR. Now when we render this one, let's see what we need to do. Well, we need to say this.l.html, and what we're going to need to do is fill it up with a handful of TD tags for the first name and the last name. So why don't I set up a template? And we'll come back to that. So back into home.blade, we have our add contacts section. Let's add a new script here, and this is going to be all contacts template. And I'm going to set the type to something that the browser doesn't recognize. So within here, I can set it up. So we'll do the TD, and that will need the first name. And then I'll just duplicate this a few times. So then the last name, the email address, and finally, the description. Now, I'm also thinking that I may need an edit link. But let's leave it like this, and then we'll come back to it. Also, while we're here, why don't we go into main.js, Let's set up a convenience function for template. Now, if you do not want this to be a global, you could also make this available to the app. I personally think it's okay to have, you know, around two globals total, that's fine, because nobody's really going to be using template outside of yourself. But if it would make you feel better, you can put it on the namespace or within a helper's object. We'll keep it like this though, window.template equals function, and we're going to return jQuery. I need to accept the ID get its HTML, and then finally run that through underscore. So underscore.template. All right, that looks good. And that way, when I go back to the views file, I can just say template, and then the name that we gave it, which is all context template. Now, when we go to our render method, we could say something like this, dot template, and then we're gonna pass in the data. Let's return this, and I think that looks pretty good to start. All right, so let's try this. We're going to log contactview.render.l and see what we get when we run that. Now, before we do that, though, of course, we need to create a new instance of our contacts. So we can do that within our global app view. New app.views.contacts, and we'll store this within a variable called all contacts view. Once again, I'm going to inject the collection. All right, so let's try this out. We create a new instance and we render it. And if I reload the page, yeah, here's what we're getting for each one. So notice that we're binding that template and attaching it to the TR. And then if I scroll down, we'll get rid of this. And ultimately when we're done, we can log this.l. One more time, there's our T body with all of the items in there. Excellent. Now at this point, we have our context view. So what we could do is say, just temporarily, I could say document.body.append all context view dot L. And if I load this in the browser, now we've added that to the page. 
But we don't want to add that to the document. What we need is some kind of table. So why don't we do it right here? We'll say table ID equals all contacts. And then we will append it to that. Now the final thing we need to do though is we need to set up the T head, but let's try that out for now. All right, so if I view the source, let's take a look. So we have our table, we have our T head, we have the T body, and then we have the four TRs. All right, so now we just need the headings. So we'll do TR, and the first one will be first name. Let's make sure that's working. And then duplicate this a couple times. Last name, email address, and description. All right, and then what I will also do, we're not really gonna have any styling here. I try to leave that out because you can do that on your own. But I can say table, T head, TD, and font weight will be bold. All right, so it's not pretty, but now we do successfully have a table of all of our contacts. Maybe we'll give a little breathing room. So let's grab the form with an ID of add contact and set margin bottom to two M's. All right, that's fine, I don't care. So we have a new contact, let's make sure it works. Ally way, Ally at example.com, my wife. So if I hit add contact, let's go to SQL Pro, refresh the page, and that did work, but I see two things here. First, I need to see immediate updating. So I need to see that show up within the table. And second, we've hit add contact, but I can still see all of this data. I should clear that out. Let's first take care of clearing the inputs. Well now, because we structured our application with Backbone, we know, all right, well, if we need to edit anything related to adding a contact, then we need to go into the add contact view. Here we go. And now once we add the contact, why don't we also say this.clearForm, and then we'll add a new method called clearForm. And what that's going to do is clear all of the values. So you know what, we might wanna cache this, but for now, why don't we see if this works? So if we try to do another one, let's set some gibberish, add contact, yes, that is working, it is clearing it. So let me get rid of that most recent one, and now we know what we need to do is essentially just clear the values for each of these inputs, but why don't we cache them so that we're not constantly tracking them down? So I could say this.firstName equals first name, and then just duplicate that. description, and email address. That way, we've cached them and we only need to reference them once. Within first name, I could replace this with this.firstName. Same with all the others. This.email address. And finally, this.description. That way, when I clear the form, I don't have to hunt it from the DOM again, even though it's gonna be very fast with an ID. I could just say this.firstName.val is an empty string. So let's duplicate that. Last name, description, I'm sure you're tired of watching me fill out these same ones. But nonetheless, that should do the trick. So let's try it again, and hmm, maybe we have a quick error. Unexpected identifier on line 31. Looks like I just forgot a comma. All right, so let's add one more. Let's just add some gibberish. And if I hit add contact, notice that we do clear the form immediately. Great. Next, let's tackle the issue of updating our list of contacts as soon as we add a new one. Well, if I switch back and we're in our add contacts view, we know that when we do add a contact, we call the create method on our collection, which is going to sync it up with the server and also add it to the collection. So what I will do here, why don't we go up to our list of collections. So we'll say contacts here, and I'm gonna add a new listener. I'm going to say this.collection.onSync, and that means once it's been saved and it's heard back from the server, in that case, we want to add one. All right, let's see if one line alone would fix that. And I will enter just lots of gibberish here. But if I hit add contact, notice that it instantly updates. And if I reload the page, now that's working. Wow, so now you're starting to see with Backbone, really, we add a couple lines of code and instantly we're getting all of this feedback. 
So what we have here is looking good, but I also think that we need to have some option to delete the contacts, and we'll do that in the next lesson.